Inspection. This video will cover how to thoroughly and effectively inspect a structure. This video series is an introductory training course intended to give a better understanding of our product. It is meant to assist with each company's internal training and is not meant to be interpreted as a complete training program. Your company trainer may use these videos to assist in training inspectors and applicators. Any employees viewing these videos should refer any questions they have to their company trainer or trainers. XC2000 Inc. is available to assist trainers should they have any questions or require additional training. Talking to customers. When arriving on site, make sure you obtain as much detailed information from the customer as possible. This will help remove any guesswork from the initial inspection because they'll be able to give you background information on the property. If you explain to the customer why you need to know the history of the property, they are likely to give you more detailed information than they would otherwise. Questions to ask the customer. What are their major concerns? Where have they noticed any activity or signs of infestation? Has anyone cleaned the areas where the infestations have occurred? Did they notice any wings, frass, droppings, damage, or other clues? When was the last time they had their home inspected? Have you had your house treated or fumigated in the last five years? Do you know the last time your property was treated? Has anyone completed any repairs for drywood termites or dry rot damage? Do you have any areas that have been remodeled or repaired within the last five years? Have any additions been added to your home? How old is your property? Have you noticed any of your neighbors having their homes treated? All of these questions help complete a story and this story helps you to determine the extent of infestation. Be sure to closely inspect poorly completed repair work. Susceptibility to infestation is greater when termites are presented with access to unpainted or otherwise uncovered wood. In this case, the end of a rafter tail with termite damage was plastered over and painted instead of being properly repaired. Signs of infestation are still clearly visible. Because this damage stands out, make sure to double check that the infestation is no longer active. On items repaired for escrow or damage being cleared, ask, is it done in a workmanship-like manner? If you release a property free and clear of damage and infestation and the repairs weren't done correctly, your company is now financially liable for having them done properly. Why it's important to do a thorough and complete inspection to be in compliance with the law. According to the Structural Pest Control Act, an original inspection should be a complete inspection unless requested by the party requesting the inspection to be limited. To have a full understanding of damage and infestation on the property. To be able to properly estimate the manpower and hours required to complete the job. To be able to accurately bid a job to clearly identify conducive conditions that may be causing infestation or damage, to clearly identify conducive conditions that may cause damage or infestation if not corrected. Walk the site. When you arrive on site, try to start the inspection in the interior areas. Follow the interior inspection area with the attic, crawl space, garage, and exterior. Inspecting in this order eliminates the potential of spreading dirt throughout your customer's home. Bring a ladder for areas that are not visible from ground level, such as on top of framing, above exposed top plates, and framing in the garage, rafter tails, and eaves. Where to look. While performing a complete inspection, keep in mind where the most common areas of infestation are. Any wood members butting up against siding or the exterior wall of a structure, fascia boards, rafter tails, rafters, door frames, window frames, above entryways, exposed framing, attics, garages, and wood siding. Most of these areas have been highlighted in red on the diagram to the right. Helpful hints for finding all evidence. Check areas the homeowner may not typically clean to find evidence, behind or on top of bookshelves or other large items, and or around all furniture along baseboards and all walkways, around canned or drop lighting. Examine cobwebs for wings and or droppings. 
If there is evidence of swarmers in the attic, make sure to check along ceiling joists by pulling back the insulation. Remember, termites most commonly infest ceiling joists by swarming. When in garage areas, check the header beam above the garage door, top plates, and storage. Any area where dry rot is found is a possible location of dry wood infestation and should be noted. Look on the ground under planter boxes, shutters, and weep screeds at the bottom of stucco. Look at eaves through second story windows. Respect customer property. Wear booties when entering the interior of a customer's property. Remove covers from shoes before entering the attic and replace them before stepping off tarp. Wear gloves in the attic and remove them before replacing the attic hatch. Place your ladder on clean tarps while inside. Don't leave dirty fingerprints on attic hatches, etc. If another company was there and left dirty fingerprints, point it out before entering and then, when done with the attic, try and clean it for them. This will ensure there is no misunderstanding with the customer. It will also bring to their attention the care your company will bring to their home. It is important to check areas the homeowner is not likely to clean often. In this case, a large pile of pellets had built up on top of these cabinets, a clear indication of termite activity. This is the pile of pellets that had accumulated on the cabinets. Try not to poke and prod wood too hard and cause more noticeable damage than the termites have already created. When you discover extensive damage in one piece of wood, check closely in adjacent wood members for additional evidence. Swarmer behavior. Swarming termites respond to light, so logically they would move toward doors and windows. If a customer says that they came from interior walls, check all of the well-lighted areas near the sidings. If termites are coming from interior walls and the home is less than five years old, more than likely they were built into the structure. Remember to keep in mind when seeing swarmers that if they are located in dark areas of the rooms away from window and door light, then they are probably near where you are seeing them. It is not common for termites to swarm toward the dark. The importance of clearly and properly calling items. It will let the customer, as well as anyone reading the report, clearly understand damage, infestation, and conditions of the property. It will help applicators with time management. It will help applicators predict what will be involved in treating each type of area being called, drill and treat versus scoping drilling and treating. This will help with time management during treatment. It will speed up the treatment process by clearly identifying for the applicator where and what needs to be treated. The applicator will not lose time trying to figure out which boards were being called. It will help ensure that nothing is missed and that the actual identified locations will be treated. If items are generalized, drive with termites at eaves, first at fascia boards, rafter tails, etc., then the applicator won't know exactly how many spots were originally identified and may miss something. Marking findings with chalk. Bring multiple colors of chalk to make sure that you have one that shows up on every paint color. Mark all areas of infestation with chalk on the exterior, in the attic, and crawl spaces. This helps applicators with the visual references on the job site. Clearly identifying the areas of infestation will give you a clear understanding of what's needed to do the job and proper amount of time needed. This also makes it easier for applicators to identify what needs to be treated so less time is wasted on locating those areas. When marking, it does not need to be really big. Markings can be discreet so not to bother the homeowner. Marking with chalk increases efficiency, saves time, helps inspectors estimate the time needed for a job, and helps applicators quickly locate infested areas. Clearly marking items with chalk means the applicator can quickly see what areas need to be treated. In this case, a kickout has been circled. Also notice the clear clumping of the pellets in the kickout. This is an indication that this is a form of current termite activity. Inaccessible areas that require scoping should be clearly marked in chalk and called on the report. 
damaged or blistering paint can be a sign of termite activity. KIA, Calotermidae Inaccessible Area, where evidence of infestation leads or gives direct access into inaccessible areas, the use of optic technology is required. Scoping must be performed by a licensed Branch 3 field representative because they will have to identify any infestation located in inaccessible areas. A KIA is an inaccessible area, meaning it is enclosed and not visible. If an infestation leads into inaccessible area, it must be clearly identified as that on the WDL reports and the recommendation needs to be scope and treat in order to stay in compliance and qualify as a primary treatment. Ask the client if they've repaired any termite damage. If the repaired areas are inaccessible, add the area as KIA to the inspection report. Make sure to note in the report that the customer identified that area for scoping. KIA areas have to be identified in reports. If an area is scoped dirty and was treated, a supplemental report must be issued saying what area is scoped dirty and what was treated. Also, under the original finding, Areas that scope clean have to be noted to complete the original call of the scope and treat and in order to offer a whole house warranty. It is important to mention that it is to be identified on the wood destroying organism report as a KIA and called by the inspector as such. Examples of KIAs. Items on left are areas that can be determined KIA. Attics, chimney framing, box thieves, box beams, enclosed balcony framing, flat roofs, sleeper floors, vaulted ceilings, and walls. Items on the right are infested areas that could give access into inaccessible areas and will be called KIAs on reports. Rafters, blocking, siding, door jams, window frames, attic framing that leads down into walls or vaulted ceilings, sub area framing that leads up into walls. Communication. It is essential to share information with the crew. The sales inspector should go over the report of each job with the crew to ensure that everyone is clear on what needs to be done or any special requests. This is the key to doing a thorough job and preventing any returns to the job site. Information to help applicators. Is there an area that might be hard for applicators to see? Did you miss an area during your inspection? Is there a tricky infestation that needs special treatment? Do payments need to be picked up or are there any special payment arrangements with the customer? All of these questions, plus many others, are important to communicate between one another to help prevent a treatment failure and unhappy clients. Hint, if you are in the area, stop by the site during the application process. Not only does this make the customer feel better taken care of, it allows for checks and balances with the applicator and inspector. The spread of droppings on the floor clearly indicates that they have fallen from the porch railing above. The droppings on the porch railing indicate the infestation extends higher up on the porch railing. You can tell this kick out is from current termite activity because the pellets stick together in a clump. Old evidence will typically not be clumped together. Here is exposed drywood termite damage. The galleries usually run right underneath the surface without breaking through and extend throughout the board. Dark color does not always indicate the pellets are old. It may be dark due to moisture, as in this case, or the wood grain. These droppings were found in an enclosed space. Because swarmers are attracted to light, dead swarmers can often be found in window seals. You can tell these swarmers are termites common to Southern California because they have a reddish brown head. A good inspector should be familiar with the most common termite species in their area and needs to be able to tell termite species apart. Sometimes termites and dry rot go hand in hand. Termite damage can let moisture gain access to wood members and become dry rot. Notice that the inspector opened up the cabinet to continue inspecting the ceiling. If termites are in ceiling boards, 
the infestation just as easily can occur inside the cabinet as outside. Also notice the inspector has a ladder and strong flashlight present to help him thoroughly inspect these types of areas. When using a ladder indoors, make sure to place a drop cloth underneath it to protect the customer's flooring. A common area of infestation and damage are corners of fascias. If boards that are infested have a tight connection, termites can travel from one board to another. The importance of having enough time for each inspection. It is crucial to have adequate time to thoroughly inspect a property. If an inspector feels rushed, then items are more likely to be missed or left off the report. How are you going to eliminate an infestation if you don't take time to locate it? For an average house with an attic, around 2,000 square feet or less, and an average number of findings, it will take one to one and a half hours to thoroughly inspect and have time to discuss the findings with the customer. Now, what if there's a crawl space under the home, a detached garage or granny flat, split level floors or multiple attics, more than the average number of infestations, the property has not been inspected or well looked after for 20 years. It is easy to see the many factors that can quickly increase the time needed for the inspection. It is extremely important that inspections are scheduled with adequate time for each property. Review. Helpful hints on doing a complete inspection. Talk to the customer. Walk the site. Bring a ladder for the areas that are not visible from ground level. Be thorough, searching for evidence. Clearly and properly call all items. Mark findings with chalk. Remember to communicate with the rest of the team. This concludes our presentation on inspection. Please continue to the quiz.